Well, good evening everybody. I thought I would uh, have a surprise and come on board. Here we are, Sunday evening. And I just thought it would be great just to share the word with one another. And I'm going to just step towards the camera and take the comments out of the way so that I can see myself and uh, have a good flow of Holy Spirit. So I'll just take the comments out of the way for now. Just see if I can do that. There we go. So we just thank you, Father. This is the day that you have made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. We thank you for this beautiful Sunday evening as the clouds are gathering and there is an indication of rain on the horizon. But we just thank you, Father. That, that's wonderful, that you're going to water the earth with your beautiful rain and it's going to saturate those places where people, where the earth needs your, your watering. So we just thank you, Father, for this time that we can talk about your word and just glean something as the sun is setting the Sunday evening. You're a good father. Amen. Just take the music down a little bit. There you go. So are you happy to be able just to come online this evening and uh, let us just share together the word of God? It's definitely not about how many of us gather, but just another opportunity to see what God is saying in this time. And so thank you for those of you that have been able to come online. Some of you might have received my invitation uh, for my online ministry, which I'm busy launching even now. And so I just know that as we went into lockdown, it thrust me into the online space and I have no regrets. I'm very happy about that. And I've really enjoyed it. And then today the Father started quickening me about this online ministry. That there are many that cannot gather at this time. And that uh, if we have ministry online, then you can watch it wherever you are. My heart is for Israel and I have been... Uh, four times in about 18 months and in fact as soon as I can I will be going back there to walk and pray and um, the beauty of uh, doing ministry online is the fact that you don't have to be at any particular place at any particular time that even as I walk in Israel and particularly in Jerusalem I can send my messages from there on my Facebook Live page, which is very exciting for me because I believe that there is an anointing in physical Israel. And uh, I've had many prophecies to confirm that a lot of what I do will come out of being in Israel. I don't have any form of citizenship to be there, so it will only be in the fact that when God instructs me that I will go and walk and pray. And so welcome to Rose Rueda Online Ministry. I pray that we'll have many, many hours together talking about the word and most of all experiencing the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I really feel that online ministry does not have to limit us to a dusty exposition of a teaching, nor does it have to limit us to any particular time frame or any particular program. And so even up until now, I've really experienced uh, the Holy Spirit while ministering and towards the end in particular, as we start praying together, that, that the Holy Spirit comes very thick upon, upon the airwaves and the work of the Holy Spirit is not limited to us having to lay hands on people. Uh, the Holy Spirit knows no limitation. So I am so thrilled that 
uh, we are living in a time of the Holy Spirit. So I have a scripture in Romans 15 verse 29, and it says, I know when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of blessing of the gospel of Christ. Obviously, that was Paul speaking to the churches and saying that he knows that when he comes to them, he will come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. I also want to say that Rose Rueda Online Ministry is about the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the present day working of the anointing of God. And so it's not a reality show. It's not um, on beauty or makeup or fashion. It's purely a flow to um, exalt the name of the Lord and to build up people in the things of God. And so be feel free to share the link with people. Uh, it's Rosemary Ruder Facebook page going live every morning at 10 o'clock and uh, also on that page you will find the YouTube link, Rose Rudy YouTube link. All of the messages also get posted up on my YouTube channel. So I want to be one that brings good news and but I also want to be one that is making the bride ready for Jesus and also to move in the prophetic gift that God has put upon my life. And so there are certain things on the preaching of the, uh, that attracts blessing. And I want to be one that brings good news and that the teachings will attract the blessings of God and the blessings of heaven. One of the things that attracts God is obedience. As we are obedient to his nudging and his calling, the blessing of God will come with that calling, with that gifting, and with that that God is asking you to release. And so will you open your ears to hear what it is that God wants to release on you and through you in the season that we are in at this moment? The stepping stones are changing. We are still on the foundation of Jesus Christ and he is the capstone and Jesus is the door unto salvation. These are unchangeable. These are the truths and the foundation of the word of God. But the, the roadway that we are facing looks a bit different to that that we knew before. And so there are certain um, tenants in our faith that God is working with at this time to bring us into this place of incredible release. And one of those is obedience. Uh, partial obedience is disobedience. Now, Lord, God is not uh, coming with an Old Testament model, but he has brought us into a new covenant in the New Testament, which is the grace of God, the forgiveness because of the blood of Jesus, the works of the enemy underneath our feet, and that we can walk in divine health, and that we will prosper even as our souls prosper. So this, uh, uh, this um, about obedience attracts his favor is not a law. It is one of the tenets of the nature of Jesus. And if you are a Christian or you're a follower of Jesus Christ, we have his divine nature. And Jesus only did what he saw his father doing. It's very interesting. He didn't say that he only does what he hears his father saying. He said he does what he hear, sees his father doing. So he lived in an open heaven. He was fully God and fully man. And so in his earthly body he was also able to see into the open heaven and the Lord is calling us his children into a spiritual awakening where we can walk in the in the voice of God we can hear heaven we can obey his instructions and as we do that we will see we will do mighty exploits and we will see the miraculous begin to come into place because we are doing what the Father is doing. 
And so there might be some of you that have come online and already you're going, no, not this lady, because there are many people that have been taught over many seasons through many different teachings that the supernatural and the miracles were only in the book of Acts for the formation of the church. I want to tell you that that is a lie. Because when Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave gifts unto mankind. Now, why would he give the gifts if they were ceased? And so he gave the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. He gave the prophetic. He gave the gift of faith. He gave the supernatural working of miracles. And so he gave it to us so that we could continue doing on the earth what he did. And he said, even greater things than what he has done, we will do also. So I want you to listen up. I want you to let those ears be open and again begin to invite Holy Spirit to be the one that teaches you, guides you and leads you into all truth. Jesus said with his own words that he must go so another can come. And he said that this one that comes will be the exact representation of who he is. He says you don't even need have need of a teacher for the Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you. He will comfort you and lead you into all truth. And so for many, many decades, there have been streams of the move of the Holy Spirit, but they peter out because the pressure from the status quo is that it's too eccentric, it's too over the top. They think that people that move in the Holy Spirit are a bunch of skadets, and this is not the truth. The truth is that if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, Signs and wonders shall follow you where you go. And so instead of living by a set of rules and regulations, you start to attract the presence of God and the blessing of God because you do what you see him doing. And he says in Hebrews 12 verse 12, very easy scripture to remember. Hebrews 12 verse 12, he says, Therefore, strengthen the hands that hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so what is lame may not be dislocated or cut off but rather healed in verse 14 of hebrews 12 it says pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no one will see the lord and so he's saying the law of obedience and the law of holiness i don't want to call them the law uh, these two nuggets, the nugget of obedience and the nugget of holiness, will, um, will attract God and make your knees firm and make your path straight and give you feet of purpose. And then he says in verse 15 of Hebrews 12, he says, Look diligently, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble and by this many become defiled and so he is saying that he wants us to be walk in obedience he wants us to pursue peace he wants us to walk in holiness and he wants us to be diligent in that that he's called us to when you are faithful with a little he'll make you faithful with much he says, continue to do the things that you even did at first. For if you are faithful with another man's portion or ministry, he'll make you faithful with your own. I love that in verse 15 of Hebrews 12, he says, look diligently, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. What looking diligently, what? Unto the, Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, for it is by grace that you have been saved not through your own doing and so father is saying that if you look diligently you will uh, to the all-encompassing grace of the cross you will not fall short for if you think you are doing this in your own strength the result will be that a root of bitterness begins to spring up and causes trouble and defiles many because we end up living like this is a competition. Who's got the better portion? Who's got the better anointing? Who's called to be prophets? Who's called to be apostles? We're called to be, firstly, to be the children of God. 
We are called to be those that are delighted with the benefits of salvation. And then we are called to allow the Lord to work through us. We are not called to work for him. We are called as his sons and his daughters to a relationship. We are serving one another. But to, in God, to God, we are sons and daughters. We are not servants of the household. And we need to start expecting our Heavenly Father to share the secrets with us. For the Lord, a house owner does not share with his servants. He shares with those that are close to him in his family and those that he trusts. Therefore, if you are moving in a prophetic anointing, you do not have to be afraid that will God give you a word or won't he? Of course he will, because he will share his secrets with you because you are his sons and his daughters. He says that when you open your mouth, he will fill it with a good report. There will be a flow because of the Holy Spirit that bypasses your mind. Wisdom is uh, comes from above and not from b below. And so even if people ask you for uh, counsel or wisdom, you don't have to be afraid and take your counseling manual off the, off the shelf. You have to lean into the Spirit and hear what the Lord is saying from the Word of God and from both the Logos and the Rhema. And so God is speaking through these written words, but he is still speaking and he will lead us into all truth and give us key, the keys of the kingdom so that we can instruct others how to come from a place of a locked door to an open door. And one of those nuggets is that we will be obedient to his call. And when he nudges us to go or to say that we'll do that. And then as we pursue holiness and peace, we will attract heaven and we will walk in the open heaven. And then in verse 17 of Hebrews 12, it says, For you know that afterwards, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance. And so Father is saying, there, is a, there are those that are fornicators and use profanity like Esau. And so Esau lost his birthright. But we are now living in the grace of God, the goodness of God, by faith. And in those places, when you have found that your, there is things in your life that the Lord is highlighting, that you do not have to do penance, that all you do, need to do is go before the Father who is able to forgive us from all unrighteousness. So when I say that we need to walk in obedience, that we need to pursue peace and holiness. It is not a set of rules and regulations. It's a positioning. That we position ourselves in the grace of God, in hearing God, in understanding that he's speaking to us. And so Esau, even though he sought diligently, was uh, on the, on a, in a bad space. And so Father is saying that he has rent the curtain from the top to the bottom. We can come. Uh, uh, quickly um, without restriction into his face place for there is no longer a curtain or a veil uh, and we can come quickly into the face place of God and uh, so we also can see that God wants to uh, wants to you not to give up on your birthright your birthright is that you will serve him all the days of your life and that he will present you faultless before the Father in that great and wonderful day. So God doesn't want you to live under a measuring rod all the time. He wants you to be dependent on the goodness and the kindness of his nature. And that he will look after you. So do not give up on your birthright. Don't sell off what God has promised you through money, fame, or power, or try to get people's acceptance. Uh, he wants you to walk uh, under a, the lightness of his call and not under a yoke that is too heavy. That is why he says his yoke is easy and his burden is, is light. When I speak to the unbeliever, maybe in a hospital, they will say to me, I can't accept Jesus now for I've disregarded him the whole of my life and I feel too bad now that I'm in a spot of trouble that I would call unto, call unto him. 
And that is because they have learned about God being a, a hard taskmaster. And that isn't the truth. He's not. Whether you came to the field at 10 in the morning or at 4 in the afternoon, they all received the same wages. You can go and look at that in the Gospels and the working on the field. There's another nugget, uh, 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 for obedience and peace and holiness. There's another uh, nugget, and that is the favor of placement. That in Genesis 39 verse 7, Now it came to pass after these things that his master's wife, cast longing eyes on Joseph and she said lie with me but he refused and he said in verse 9 how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God and he ran and he ended in prison and God sent for him at the appointed time and so I want you to know that maybe you've been going through season upon season upon season and you find yourself falling into a place of disfavor with man well, Joseph went through disfavor as well. And he went through this terrible trouble uh, of being tested. There's a test of, of girls and glory and gold, or guys and glory and gold. And may I call unto Jesus and the walk that we have be greater than the temptations that will come upon man. Because the word says that these things will come. And so he ran. He ran away from the things that were going to trip him up. I believe that the door has been shut for us to come alone with God, to be able to give our lives back to him in a new way, not again unto salvation, for we are not trampling the blood of Jesus underfoot every time, but to ask for the mature anointing. The word of God says in Corinthians, when I was a child, I thought as a child, but now that I am no longer a child, I put away foolish things. So what would these foolish things be? Well, the word of God says, do not compare yourselves amongst yourselves, for this is foolish. This is foolish. And so Father says, stop comparing ministry to ministry. He says, each of you have been called uniquely with a unique portion and a unique outworking. To start ministry doesn't mean that you have to build a church and be a pastor. It means being excited to the call of what God has given you. Whether it is to feed the poor, whether it is to drink, give water to the thirsty, whether it is to go and visit in the prisons, the Father says, this is the fast that I have chosen. This is the fast that I have chosen, that you will look after widows and orphans and feed the poor and give a drink of water to even the least of these. You will give it, do it unto me, says the Lord. So who are you this day? I want to tell you that you are part of God's dream team, that he has a dream for your life. And it might not be the dream that you've been walking in for 30 years. All of that was just a preparation of what is about to come. And so Father says this is your season of expansion and not your season of decrease. And so God wants you to know that our dreams are woven in to get together with other people's dreams that he calls us to minister as teams on the face of the earth, even as he trained the 12 and he even sent out the 72 two by two. He's not looking for superheroes and lone rangers. He's looking for a family, a family that will display the glory of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. We were moved into the last days, even when Jesus was on the earth, and now we are living in the time of the working of the Holy Spirit. For in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, on your sons and your daughters, and your old men will dream dreams, and your young ones will have visions. Keep your eye on, the new, on this young generation, for God is about to put an anointing on them that is going to bypass their minds and bring them in to supernatural delivery of the word and the spirit and so father says families together will be a demonstration of what it is to be a father son and holy spirit and so he says do not prevent the children from coming to me as the religious leaders did when jesus was on the earth he says bring the little ones unto me that i may bless them so in Gen in genesis 49 verse 9 after two years, Joseph is fetched to interpret the dream. 
and in from in 24 hours after waiting for two years he goes from prison to president would you not call that perfect placement so god says perfect obedience calling out to god in in the place of holiness unto him pursuing him and finding yourself in perfect placement there are days that you feel restless because you haven't found your space or your place it's on its way there's also a beautiful nugget it's called the um the reward of honor that if you will honor your mother and father that your days will be long on the earth if you will honor leaders you too will walk in anointing of leadership for if you want to be a leader you learn to serve that you're honest that you'll honor your dream givers honor those that keep you afloat honor those that preach the word honor those that have prophesied over you and honor those that are in governments and then the, the final one i'm going to speak on is the law of giving there is seed time and harvest and as we give unto the lord so we are laying up an inheritance in heaven and with the measurement that you release to the same measurement god will bless back to you and fulfill your every need and then that brings you into the nugget called the law of increase and in judges 6 god says to gideon you are my mighty man of valor and so gideon went from feeling totally uh, downcast to a place of a man of increase and in the valor of god and he came out god's mighty warrior and so father says today that there is a divine exchange happening where he's taking off of you uh, the robes of despair and shame and the the reports that were reported over you in many churches or in even in your childhood or even in your school that said you're never going to amount to much and um, you must find a job behind the scenes and you're not a people person and you should never work with finances all these things that people that do not have eyes to see what god is doing in your life pronounces over you and what it's not a, a blessing it's a curse i break every word of curse that has come against you as you're watching this evening i break off every uh, foot that has been pushed in your back to try and climb over you so that they could be something more than you i cancel that today in jesus name every word that has risen in judgment and every tongue that has come against you ceases this day and comes down in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus father god i pray this evening that at the sound of your voice and the word that has come forth this evening, that your anointing destroys every yoke, every yoke, every yoke of shame, every yoke of poverty, every yoke of, of confusion, every yoke of a lack of vision is broken this night. The chains fall off. The prison door is opened. Maybe you this evening or in this afternoon was crying out to God and saying, God, show me the way, show me the way. And Father says, I want you to know, my sons and my daughters, that I will not leave you as sojourners and wanderers. I will instruct you. I will be behind you saying this is the way walking in it. I will lift you up in a, even in this time of, of disappointment. I will surround you with my wing. I will cover you with my feathers. Fear not. Fear not. For my plan for you will not fail. But it's going to be loaded with increase loaded with increase for this is your day and this is your hour you will be surprised but not surprised with calamity 
but surprised with blessing. Self-doubt falls off tonight. And your new song will be, It is well with my soul. It is well with your soul. Greater is he that is in you than them that are in the world that are coming against you. Do not entertain to entertain the threat, <clears throat> excuse me, the threat of the enemy. Do not entertain those that will tell you you're coming to ruin. I want to finish tonight by telling you a uh, experience that I had on one of my trips to Israel. The tour lady was taking everybody to the Jordan River for those that wanted to be baptized. And myself and my husband had been baptized together some years before, quite a lot of years before. And I was there on my own, as in not traveling with my husband at that time. And I said, no, I'm not getting baptized. I've been baptized and I don't feel to be baptized. And there were a few of us that weren't uh, felt not to be baptized that day, but when we got down to the Jordan River, they said, okay, Rose, would you mind, as each one comes out of the water, that you will pray and prophesy over them? I said, that'll be my absolute delight. So one by one, they went down into the water and they were baptized and they came back up out of the water. And, uh, I did that. I flowed in the prophetic gifting and prophesied over them. All of them were finished with their baptism and started to go and dry off and get changed and started to go back to the bus. And myself and a very lovely friend were walking together, talking. And in the middle of what she was saying to me, I said to her, oh, I'm so sorry. Do you mind? I just feel the Father calling me back to the river. She said, absolutely no problem. And I turned around and I went back to the edge of the river. And the Lord by his Holy Spirit said, Rose, take off your, your shoes and wash your feet for the new journey that I'm going to take you on. And I took off my gold tackies, because of course, you know, you want to look super duper on tour. And I put my feet in the water and I bent, um, leaned forward and I washed my feet for the new journey that God has for me. And I finished washing my feet. He said, Rose, I want you to wash your hands for the new um, gifting and ministry that I am giving you. I washed my hands and he said, now I want you to wash your face and wash away the pain of the journey that has passed. And I washed my face. I put my shoes back on and I got up and I started to walk up from the river. And that beautiful friend that was talking to me, she had waited at a distance. And she had taken a series of photographs of me from the side, sitting at the river, my head bowed before the Lord. I did not know that it would be for an appointed time. And of course, that appointed time, almost to the day, was 16 months later, when my husband went to be with the Lord. No, it wasn't 16 months, I'm so sorry. It was 16 weeks later, when my husband went to be with the Lord. And so they started a new journey that God had spoken about when I washed my feet, a new ministry when I washed my hands, and a new joy on my countenance. And it's been from one level of glory to another. I want you to trust the Lord, even in these unusual circumstances, and know that he will not drop you, and know that he will not leave you, and know that he will not disappoint you. For today, he says, I wash your feet, I wash your hands, I wash your face. He says, lift up your head, for my countenance is upon you. Step out with courage, 
for I'm walking inside of you. Extend your hand for the supernatural and the miraculous, for I've put my gifting upon you. I pray that the word of God has blessed you this evening as I just felt compelled to come online. I'm going to st stand up from my seat and come and look at who all is online and see if Holy Spirit quickens anything in the area of ministry. So if you don't mind, I'll need to come a little closer to the camera now and get back all the comments. It's lovely to see Melinda. It's lovely to see Cindy Fisher. It's lovely to see Gerda, Glynis Volmerans, my beautiful daughter, Benice, and so many others. Mariki Van Sale, Joe, lovely to see you, Joe, darling, and all of you. And I see Joe says hi there, Benice. Yes, there's 28 of you on board right now. Mm. And I thank you, Lord, for each one of them, each one of them. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Ansel Lopesha, Father says, Father says to tell you, Ansel, that there's been many changes in your calling. And Father says, Ansel, some of those changes have not been easy. And you've just not very, haven't fully got into it when again you hear him calling you to a place of separation. But Father says separation is not isolation, nor is it giving up what I've given you to do. It's about living inside of the, inside of the womb of the place of fellowship. He says, just close the door and come with me for a little while. For he says, I want to kiss you with the kisses of heaven. Angel, he says, I am doing a new thing in you. Even now, do you not perceive it? I am drawing you unto myself with cords of love that cannot be broken. He says, tonight he silences the voices of accusation that speak to you and tell you you're not doing it right. And he says, you are my darling. You're like a hand cut jewel in my hand. And my life will shine through you. He says, I've called you. I call you my princess. You are mine. Do not shrink back because of other people's opinions or ideas about your life. I will bless your coming and I'll bless your going. I will breathe my spirit on you in the season of new opportunities. Watch and see what I can do with your life. It is good, it is good, it is very good, says the Father. Very good. To my beautiful daughter, Bernice, I'm so proud to be your mother. But I'm also proud that I know that you hear the voice of the Father. And Father says to you, Benice, you hear him and you hear him very accurately. And there are days that he speaks to you that you sometimes think it's just yourself consoling yourself. But God says, no, my daughter, that is my voice. He says, I've given you a large portion of wisdom and discernment. You know when to push and you know when to rest. And I want you to know that whatever you put your hand to, my daughter, will prosper. And so Father says, do not be intimidated and do not shrink back. He says, go big and go large. Go big and go large. For I have called you to be a voice. I have called you with an authority upon your mouth. And he says, as you begin to speak, so particularly women, but also families, will come to a place of divine freedom. Divine freedom. He says, whether you are here or whether you are there, it doesn't matter where you are positioned on the earth. I want you to know, my daughter, that you have a message, a message that is um, inclusive of body, mind, and spirit. He says, do not see it as a lesser call than a pulpit. For I have given you a place in the marketplace, and I've given you a place amongst the, the people that walk on the face of the earth. And I'm going to use you in an amazing way. And know that 
you do not have to be intimidated and shrink back for you're going to find yourself sharing stuff and it's going to flow so quickly out of your mouth that you are going to be amazed how the Lord will fill that mouth. That little body and that little mouth with that big heart is going to speak words of life as you point them in the direction of the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I remember many years ago when I was um, fully only in women's ministry, and I used to say, I'm not building a platform for myself. I'm building a platform for my daughters and my granddaughters. I have one daughter and five granddaughters. And I just have a passion about seeing women come in to their purpose. That doesn't mean that I don't have passion for my sons. I have two sons and an added grandson. Uh, and um, of course, my heart is for the whole body, for for sons and daughters, but it's a delight to be able to release that word over my physical daughter. Yes, 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 Lord. You're so patient, all of you. <laughs> there's a couple that come on and off and on and off. Then there's 30, then there's 27. Yes, but that's okay. That's okay. It's not about numbers. Glynis Volmerantz, Father says to you, my daughter, you've got an extremely tender heart, but you are a builder. You know how to build the kingdom of God and you know how to, to bring people into the kingdom of God. He says, you have an evangelistic anointing on you and also anointing of healing to heal the brokenhearted. You know how to lift the treasure out of people and to present them uh, in a, uh, to present them in a place where they no longer look down on themselves, but they begin to realize that they are okay. And so Father says, um, I want you to know, my daughter, that you'll often find yourself in unusual places and unusual circles, maybe even at food lovers or pick and pay, and there you'll find one, just the one. And he says, I've called you to the one. And as you begin to encourage them, there will be a, a beautiful friendships. I see like a, a tapestry of women that you have reached out to and that you have embroidered this beautiful tapestry of lives, friendships that you've had for many, many years. You are not uh, one of those that is a friend today and gone tomorrow. You have you've always been one for the long haul. And so Father says, keep drawing and keep writing. I I'm, can't remember if you do write as in poetry, but I see the Father saying prose and poetry and drawings. And he says, stop hiding it under a bushel. <laughs> he says, put it out there, put it on your Facebook page and watch. It's going to unlock lives for people. Uh, and so Father says, I love you, my daughter. Do not be afraid of the future. I'm watching over you and I'm watching over your husband. And even those places that there's weakness, I will bring strength. For I am Jesus, the healer, says the Lord. So, Father, thank you for Glennis. Thank you, Father, for her faithfulness unto you and her faithfulness in friendships. That she understands the deposit on each one's life. And she encourages them to come into their best life. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I think time-wise, not that any of us have anywhere to go. But I want to leave you with time for your private space with Jesus. Maybe this evening you feel called to go to your bathroom and wash your feet, wash your hands, and wash your face. And just present yourself before God and say, here I am, Lord. I wash my feet for a new journey. I wash my hands for the new gifting and calling. I wash my face for the disappointments of the past. And I present myself as a holy sacrifice unto you for perfect placement. That I walk in the fullness of my birthright 
and my inheritance in Jesus' name. God bless you. I will see you on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. You are a blessing, and I thank God for you. Have a wonderful evening. I will see you in the morning.